Welcome back. I really hope you are progressing nicely through the content and the materials and you're really finding value in the discussions as well as a lot of the tools that we've provided. And maybe even more importantly, I hope you're finding real value in doing some of the insight and some of the, the questionnaires and looking at some of those somewhat difficult questions to really peel back um, the layers of the onion that are us, right? Today, I wanna to talk to you about our final uh, foundational concept, which really ties everything back in, ties it all back together, and I'll explain that here in a second. But I wanna to talk to you about the psychology of your purpose today. Now, if you will, just indulge me for a second here and just, you know, maybe close your eyes and think about the time that you've spent during this course and, and some of the things that you thought or had notions about before starting the course and, you know, what you've learned along the way, some of those aha moments and where you are now and how, how maybe you feel differently. Maybe you feel a little bit more, hopefully, empowered. So... I want you to compare those things and, and I want you to really get in touch with something that's really exciting you because you should be excited. You have taken steps to uh, come along on this journey uh, and not a lot of people have, right? I mean, you are among the few and the tools you're learning here and the group and the people that you're meeting here will certainly be available to you potentially for the rest of your life to, to keep growing and to keep flexing and exercising. So I'm really proud of you and you should be very proud of yourselves as well. So, you know, everybody is here following a different journey, right? But at this point along the game, if you've been involved with the, the evening calls and if you've been involved in the work and hopefully you've been involved with doing some of the, the online stuff, you know, you know each other a little bit better now. And, and, and this whole concept of psychology of purpose, is, in my mind, is really about that final push, right? We, we've come this far together, and, and I hope you, you give me permission to give you this final push. So uh, here we go. You know, again, I, I think I mentioned it in our last uh, foundational call, where I mentioned that, you know, none of us has asked for the hand that we're dealt, right? You didn't ask for it, your loved one didn't ask for it, but the manner that you go about addressing it, the manner that you embrace uh, the life that you have and move forward is a huge part of what defines you and defines your um, life's purpose. And this is not meant to be esoteric, pie in the sky, you know, conceptual nonsense, right? This is real life stuff. But you need to be careful that Again, this aspect of your life, this loved one with mental illness or this loved one with, with complex medical issues or complex clients, um, etc. This cannot be your purpose. This does not define who you are. That would be shameful. You are so much more than a label. You're so much more than X. Right? When we start labeling ourselves as a parent of a, of a child with mental illness, as um, a clinician, as a lawyer, you know, we're putting ourselves into a box instantly. I mean, for instance, I know when I tell people I'm a lawyer, I alienate 50% of the crowd, right? Right away, um, you know, just because people have their preconceived notions about uh, the law or being a lawyer. So keep that in mind. Keep in mind your higher ambitions and your higher drive. And, and, and think about the support that you'll need to get you there and who's able to give you that support and also who may need you and who you can support. I mean, this idea of a purpose is important to us because we all have those days, as I said in our very first call, where you know, we lack motivation, we lack, you know, we're very frustrated, we, we have resentment. Um, we just don't have the fire in the belly and we're, we're, we're not um, proactive at all. We'd rather just react as things come and just sort of fend them off as best we can. Um, but again, getting back to that question, that foundational question that I asked you so many weeks ago, which was who or what may happen today if I don't show up, right? And the reason that I put that question at the very beginning of our course 
is because I wanted it to sort of be the thread that kind of comes through the entire course here. And, and it resonates here as well. As you start thinking about questions and about, you know, okay, where am I? What am I doing? Am I really making a difference? Ask yourself some other questions. Um, like, who needs me? What is my mission? What's my purpose? What's my purpose here? What's my personal mission? What's my own vision for the future for myself, my loved one, my family, my clients, whatever the cat, whatever the case may be, you know, what path am I on right now? And is this the right path that I want to be on? And, you know, the overarching theme question to all of this is why, why is it so important to me? Asking these questions becomes the great motivator. And it's a reminder, a reconnection to the fact that we all have a purpose beyond our current circumstances. One of my mentors and coaches, um, Michael Port, likes to say that we're all put on this earth for, for a person, for a purpose, for a reason. It's our job, it's our duty to find out what that purpose and that reason is. It's also our job and our ethical and moral obligation to get out there and find the people that we are meant to serve, that we're meant to help and to help them and to bring our special talents and our special gifts to them. Now, that does not mean everyone. We've talked about this earlier. You cannot please and you cannot be for everyone. Some folks just aren't for you, right? But those who are are out there and they need you and they want you to lead them, to influence them. And it all goes back to your convictions and your strength and your character and your sense of purpose that will allow you to do that. Those people are out there that need you. So in this course, this particular segment uh, of the course or module, it's about making you feel better so that you perform better. And you're, you're more available and present uh, to tackle your challenges. You know, this is concrete stuff. This is not has to be seen as, as just some, I don't know, philosophy or philosophical BS, right? So we want to get in touch and really understand our big why. Why do we believe so firmly that it is our obligation to advocate for our loved ones? Why do we believe so firmly that it is our obligation to help others who may need a lift up. So you all have, I'm sure on some level, a different perspective or a different definition of what your purpose is. So I definitely want to give you some questions to help you to sort of formulate um, that, that equation in your mind, if you will. And the, these questions will go along with some of the questions in the coursework that uh, that we prepared for you for this particular module. But think about some of these questions. And again, as usual, pause the video. If you want to give it some time, that's no problem. You could always come back. But question number one is, has your purpose evolved maybe since we started working together six weeks ago? Have you ever in your life or in the last six weeks even felt off purpose? out of kilter, out of sync for a prolonged period of time. And if you have, what was going on then? What was happening in your life then um, that made you feel so? And conversely, um, when you feel like you're really purposeful, what does that feel like? How, how would you describe yourself? What do you act like when you're feeling really purposeful? Do you feel, I wonder, that people in your lives, including your extended family, your coworkers, your friends, do you feel that they understand your purpose? And if, if they, if so, great. If not, how can you help them to understand your purpose a little bit better? And, and is that important to you? I, I submit that it really should be. So this, connection with our why, this connection with our purpose, um, and our strength in, in maintaining that connection is really 
the, the thing that allows us to maintain a sense of composure, to maintain the course, even when everything's falling down around you. And when the, you know, you, you get off course a little bit, straighten yourself back out. Um, this purpose is the driving underlying factor behind all of it. Without purpose and conviction and without congruity to those purpose and convictions, our strength and our influence has very little impact. So you have to constantly consider how are you showing up in this world? I know for me, you know, when I'm not on the path, right path, I say, you know, I, I definitely lack a lot of the psychological discipline. And that's what I'm asking you to, to get yourself into here is to, to discover and practice some psychological discipline. But, you know, I, I very often get into a situation where I'm saying, you know, who am I? Who am I to do this? Who am I to be talking to all these people from all over the country about helping them with their family situations? Who am I to help them with their, with their loved one with mental illness or complex medical issues? But, you know, I also know that the opposite is true. You know, I, I know this. I earned this. For 25 years, I've gone around this country talking about this. I've been working in this field. I know a lot of people in the field. I know a lot of things that they've taught me that I want to bring to you. So I know I can stand up here and I could talk to you with a degree of authority about some of the things that I'm talking to you about. But again, you know, there are those days where I don't want to get out of bed either. But I know that I want to get up and I know that I want to show up because I don't want to think about what could happen if I don't. So this positivity, again, needs to become a habit. We need to work it because it's important to our lives as much as it's important to all those around us, just like our physical health is. In fact, on some level, I think that the emotional, psychological health, our brains, is more important than our physical health because I don't think that without, without um, feeling good up here, we won't feel good down here uh, or, or get the motivation to get out there and exercise, et cetera. So I'd really put our mental well-being ahead of uh, even our physical well-being and, and, and working those habits that we're talking about into um, a routine is, is imperative. We talked a little bit of, in the past, I think, about um, head trash, where, you know, I just kind of mentioned how, you know, we allow head trash to rent way too much space in our heads. You know, who am I? Am I good enough? What, what, what do I deserve? Why do, why do I think I should get this? And we, therefore, get our lives, uh, Maya Angelou once called it, uh, rotating on a sameness wheel, and we become bored, and we become apathetic. So think about that. Think about how much time we waste on disempowering thoughts. We think about the things that we're not doing well or that we can't do well. So what are some of the beliefs and thoughts that you've been circling around in your head? What's some of the head trash that you have going on and, and, and stuff that you've been giving way too much uh, uh, importance to or allowing to rent way too much space in your brain? You've got to think for a moment on that. You've got to throw those things away. As I said, the questions that we ask ourselves tend to be disempowering. But when we're talking about getting in touch with our purpose and utilizing that power, we have to turn this around. We have to think about the positive things that we say to ourselves to carry us through those difficult times. And, and why it's so important that we stay congruent and in touch with that. So what is, you know, a good belief about yourself? What's, a, what's something strong that you feel about yourself that, that you share or could or want to share with the world? And, and on a scale of one to 10, are you owning that? Are you owning that strength? Are you owning all the greatness that is you? You know, you don't want to walk around talking to ourselves all the time, but you know, self-talk is really extremely important um, in terms of building high performance habits and, and personal development. So again, rather than disempowering questions, I want to go back to your purpose and remind you of 
how empowered you are and how powerful you really are. So as we wrap up uh, this, set, this session in this module, I'm just going to ask you a few questions like I always do, and you can turn off the video like I always say. But I want you to think about some things. Um, have you, how often do you find yourself focusing on negative thoughts? Or how about, do you focus a lot on negative emotions? Can you identify for me one, just one thing, just one belief that makes you more happy and more confident in who you are? And when you feel that sense of confidence, and confidence for that matter, what does it feel like? I hope you say it's very empowering. <laughs> Finally, what action step are you going to take moving forward to make positive, empowering thoughts a habit in your life? I mean, you could do any number of things. Post a sticky note on your mirror so you see it every morning when you're brushing your teeth. It empower you. You know, what can happen if I don't show up in the world today? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see the result of what may happen because I want to be there. I want you to be there. I'm so grateful for the time that we've had together. I'm so very grateful for the work you do on behalf of somebody else. So until the next time, thank you again for your participation and just for being the empowered person that you are. <laughs>